to um, subscribe online. Um, clearly, we've got a we've got some fantastic um, services in our libraries and one-stop shops that will help people um, to uh, subscribe to this service. Um, but 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 I think we need to be able to, as I say, help those people who are not able to get out of their home um, to access this service. And one, I think, very constructive suggestion is to include a account helpline for those people in the in the council tax bills that are sent out in, in March to every household. Uh, and if necessary, you know, to look at um, uh, maybe have one of our outreach teams to go out to those people to actually physically help them to sign up. Online. So, um, you know, I think we are looking at mitigating factors and ways in which we can can help um, the people that we've talked talk about. Final point is, in your, in your sort of final paragraph, um, I I don't know I don't know when um, you don't mention how we might pay for the five pound refund that you're um, you're suggesting. Given that we've got to make forty five million pounds worth of savings um, uh, next year, it, it, I think it would have been helpful if you could suggest it another budget that we could have cut to refund this money because um, you know it's easy isn't it to say let's put money back into the budget for these kind of things but actually I think the, the responsible thing to do is to actually identify where that alternative source of funding is, is going to come from because otherwise you, you, you're relying on, on, on others to raise some other budget head to, to pay for this, this kind of this refund. So I mean I think um, the, you have made an important point about the digital exclusion Excluded. I think there are things that we're doing and uh, looking at to try and help those people who generally, uh, for a whole variety of reasons, can't access a um, uh, uh, computer. Um, but actually, I think the way to address these kind of very difficult savings is to have a government that actually imposes savings on a fair basis, not on a completely unfair way in which Northern councils have been clobbered with savings which are much higher than affluent areas in the south of England. So I think that's the that's the way forward to address issues like this. Okay, so I think we I think we've made our position clear. But thank you, Stuart, for uh, putting your case. Okay, so I'm going to ask us to uh, uh, do we do we need to move as a formal resolution then? So is it just to okay? So so. Um, um, Bernie has got a form of words which she's gone through which we can uh, supply um, to you and that may can be called to the council. So the next council meeting. Yeah, yeah you, 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 you'll write it. So. Okay, yeah. so can, can we agree that response from the cabinet yeah, member? Yeah, yeah. And then council will, will, uh, will consider it to you for us. Okay, yeah. thanks very much. Thanks for everybody. Thank you. Okay. So uh, that uh, takes us on then to item six, which is the uh, draft enforcement policy. Um, Bernie, do you just want to take a look at that? Thank you. 
homes, uh, and we try to put tells us that we, we, we must do this as part of our local plans. And, and, and two, uh, on the report, in terms of the background and key issues, uh, the Gypsy and Travel Accommodation Assessment, uh, the GTAA, for these purposes, the Mayor of West Lancashire was commissioned uh, to provide evidence uh, of the need for specialist accommodation in the world. And as we see in three, the methodology of the report set out in paragraph three of the report. And paragraph four sets out the study findings we get. Uh, in four, we see the assessment indicates that Wirral has an equal six permanent and four transit uh, pitches for gypsy travellers in the short term. That's 2013, 14, 2018, 19. <coughs> and with two permanent pitches over a period of time as identified in the report. The assessment does not identify a need for travelling show people yards in Wirral. In five, we see in March 20. Well, the Coalition Government published both the National Planning Policy Framework and its accompanying uh, planning policy for travel sites. These documents replace all previous national planning policy in, this, uh, in respect of gypsy and travellers and travelling show people. Um, the government it says the government's overarching aim is to ensure fair and equal treatment for travellers in a way that facilitates the traditional and nomadic way of life while respecting the interests of the settled community. In six we see once targets for travellers provision has been established through a need assessment such as the GTAA. Uh, national policy requires that the local planning authority must include the targets in their local plan, identify and update annually a supply of specific deliverable sites sufficient to provide five years worth of sites. Uh, to be considered deliverable, it says, as well it goes on, a site has to be available now, offer a suitable location for development uh, now, and be achievable with a realistic prospect that development will be delivered on the site within five years, and that, de develop and that development of the site is viable. It also goes on to say, uh, to identify, we must identify a supply specific development sites or broad locations for growth for 6 to 10 and where possible years 11 to 15. In 7, uh, Chair, the Council says the Council should, should now take steps to identify land to provide for travel accommodation based on the findings of the assessments which I mentioned earlier. We see the preferred approach is for council to identify suitable sites for consultations. Sites should be identified through mechanisms such as uh, a review of the council's existing uh, assets or by looking at the sites already being considered for uh, other types of housing as part of the council's strategic housing land availability assessment. Just to finish, Chair, the recommendation that you see at the end of the report states that we, uh, that we recommend that the findings of the Merseyside and West Lancashire Gypsy and Traveller accommodation assessments are, are used to, one, form the content of the Council's Emerging Core Strategy Local Plan and subsequent site specific local plan. Yeah. And two, that the assessment is approved as a material consideration for use by the planning committee in the determination of planning committees, planning applications, and so on. And three, that a further report be submitted to cabinet when appropriate uh, sites have been identified. Can I, can I just finish that the, the, um, at the end of it? The reason for the recommendations are shared to provide an up to date evidence base for the preparation of the council's core strategy local plan with the requirements of national planning policy. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Okay. I think the, the key point to emphasize here is that you know, this is um, a government um, instruction, if you like, by the planning policy for traveller sites that we must, um, we have to uh, consider um, providing um, sites for uh, gypsy and traveller 
handling people. Can, can, can I just um, use my position as chair slightly to ask Kevin a question? It says in paragraph 2.1, Kevin, that some authority, authorities that have failed to do this have had their local plans found unsound. What, what would be the implications of that happening? Uh, yeah, should, the, should the planning inspector uh, find the local plan on sand, you will have to start the process all over again. But uh, the danger of that then, Chair, without a local plan, that planning activity that came in uh, would be more at risk of uh, being successful at being people of the inspector to do that plan and start the local plan in the community. The reality is for this reason. So we'll start with uh, item 8, which is the Recovery Orientated Substance Misuse Treatment Service for Wirral, the contract award. Um, I'm just going to ask um, Fiona Johnson, Director of Public Health, to briefly um, introduce it for us. Fiona. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, Cabinet will recall on the 10th of October last year that the
I'm going to suggest that we, um, unless there are any other questions, I'm going to suggest that we agree these recommendations that um, uh, are in the report, um, subject to discussing the information in the exempt um, appendix, which uh, we'll be uh, looking at a bit later on in the meeting. So can I move that? Is that agreed? Okay, thank you. Right, so that takes us on to item nine. Um, the Healthy Child Programme for 0 to 19 year olds contract awards. So, Fiona, can you take us through this, please? Um, thank you, Chair. Again, uh, at the same time last year, uh, you authorised officers to implement the transition process and integrate the Healthy Child Programme for 0 to 19 year olds in partnership with NHS England. Um, the Cabinet has recalled that the commissioning brought five year old services actually in line with the NHS England. Okay, so um, that then takes us on to uh, the, the item of the Children and Family Services, which is item number 10, Early Years and Children's Centre. Uh, Tony.
due to July 2014. And a report of ordinary review was detailed in August 2014. And the review was considered one, the council's financial position, the control of a budget for the service is now 2.3 million. The council's corporate priorities, partner environments, and the need to collaborate, in other words, to reduce duplication, share resources, and align outcomes. Changes to government guidance and national policy and the direction of travel. Statutory responsibilities for the service and requirements to deliver a targeted offer and alignment to the early help a preventative approach. At present, we've got 16 designated by the government children's centres, all delivering the full core purpose, full core purpose offer. And there are currently 18 buildings, originally delivery was on 24 buildings. I think it's important to note, Chair, that the extent of early years is a far wider sphere of activity than children's centres, much of which is legislative and is delivered as part of statutory duties levied at the local authority. And these are such as the Family Information Service, the two and three and four year old early education offer, and support for the wider early years, private, independent, and voluntary sector. Briefly, the outcome of the review. This focuses on the delivery approach and the philosophy that seeks to protect the buildings if the current austerity position changes, the council will have buildings to build the service back up. Seeks to preserve the stock of buildings for use by children and families and will mitigate against clawback of capital grants. Will ensure parity of finance and resource based on need. Will ensure compliance with statutory responsibilities and will ensure every child still has a name to children's centres. And the outcome of the review will align services and partners through one high level outcome. School ready and ready to learn. And this is, uh, we're going to do this to progress this through four recommendations. And one, targeting the offer, and that's to those children who need it the most. Integration and collaboration, and this is an effective way to jointly deliver services. Outreach teams, this will be developed in each constituency area that will vary based on levels of need. Business teams will also be developed to support the wider early years offer and, de and delivery. And all teams will have an environment entry level and apprentices to ensure employment opportunities for communities. Finally, children's centres. All buildings will be preserved and see some early childhood service delivery. However, only four centres will be designated. Each constituency area will have a designated children's centre to ensure a named centre for every child. Ensure services, health, education and social needs are coordinated and respond appropriately to need. And the next steps, Chair, will see a six-week consultation on the delivery and approach progress to delivery to commence from April 2015. And Chair, I'd just like to say that the whole driver behind um, the look at these changes and the, 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 this um, review is to ensure that every child, every single child without exception, should be equipped emotionally, socially and developmentally to start school ready to learn and to reach their own true potential regardless of their ability, background, or personal circumstances. So thanks, Chair. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks for that, Tony. Um, just just to, to add uh, one or two things and, and uh, reiterate some of the key points you were making. I mean, I'm really proud that unlike a number of other local authorities, we will not be closing any of our children's centres. That is a fantastic achievement in the light of the huge cuts um, that we're having to face from uh, from this government. So um, congratulations to, to to all the people involved in this review. I think it's excellent. Uh, you know the, the argument that you put Tony, I think, is compelling. But um, um, we need to retain those buildings. So when um, hopefully under a new government next year we have the funding, uh, some of the funding we stored anyway, that we can start to build those uh, vital services. 
back up again. And I think that's a, you know, that's a principle that we we apply to other buildings like libraries, but the children's centres is, is um, very important because clearly we we the whole thrust of this goes back to the every child matters policy we launched on the last day of the government that you know we need to give um, our children the best possible start in life. So I I, I'm, I think this is a really good piece of work where. We're, I think we're, we're taking a sensible approach and we're targeting um, resources, uh, particularly to those communities um, most in need. And, um, uh, and we've got a six week consultation exercise when I iron out the, um, the, the details and give people an opportunity to, to comment. Um, but I, I do think that this is, a, um, this is a really kind of innovative piece of work. And I, I want to particularly thank Deborah Gornick and her team for the, the excellent work that, that you've done, Deborah, to, um, to get us to this, this point. So thanks very much. Right, I'm going to suggest that we agree those recommendations as moved by Tony. Are they agreed? Thank you very much. Right, um, I've not been notified of any other urgent business. Um, so at that point, I'm then going to uh, ask uh, Cabinet, will you agree to remove the exemption to exclude the press and public? Do we need to go to our Cabinet? Is that seconded? Thank you, Anne. So that's agreed. So may I please ask press and public to uh, please leave? Thank you very much.